Okay, welcome to a micro video and in this short session we're going to be looking at an analysis of positive consumption externalities as a cause of market failure. So first of all, a quick recap on the concept of an externality. An externality can be negative or positive and is basically a spillover effect from production or consumption for which no appropriate compensation is paid to one or more third parties who have been affected. The key point uh, is that an externality lies outside the initial market transaction and typically uh, is not reflected in the market price and private equilibrium quantity consumed. Now, externalities can cause market failure if the price mechanism doesn't take into account the social costs and the social benefits of production and consumption. So what are positive consumption externalities? Well, a positive consumption externality happens when somebody consuming a good or a service creates or generates a positive spillover to a third party that lies outside the transaction. And what that means is that the social benefit of consumption which is the private benefit plus the external benefit, the social benefit of consumption exceeds the private benefits. In other words, there's an external benefit. As a result, we draw the social marginal benefit curve as higher than the private marginal benefit curve. Now, in a free market, in the absence of government intervention of one sort or another, there will be under consumption of goods which generate positive consumption externalities and that is a cause of market failure. Well there's loads of examples of positive consumption externalities that one could choose so here's a few. Things like consumption of healthcare, uh, physiotherapy uh, can provide a benefit not only to the individual person but obviously a wider potential wider social benefit from increased access to and use of healthcare. Uh, lots of studies about the long-term social benefits from effective early years education, particularly giving people access to high quality nursery provision. Lots of towns and cities have subsidised bike schemes in urban areas, partly to do improve and increase activity, but also of course to address traffic congestion. There are significant, in my opinion, significant externalities from the use of public community spaces, uh, libraries and other areas hugely important, often an underutilised resource. It saddens me that many libraries, of course, have closed in recent years. Crying shame. And likewise, things like museums and galleries, if consumed by people, can have a broader, wider social benefit. A really topical example at the moment uh, is the issue or the debate about the externalities from vaccinations. Uh, there is at the moment a, 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 an issue of what's called vaccine hesitancy which is essentially the reluctance of some parents or the refusal to vaccinate their children despite the availability of vaccines. And the World Health Organization have put vaccine hesitancy as one of their top 10 threats to global health in 2019. It's widely recognized that vaccinations when consumed are a cost effective way of avoiding disease. And the WHO estimate that vaccinations currently prevent between two to three million deaths a year um, and they're looking to improve the, the global coverage and address the information issues and the lack of trust in vaccinations which seems to be affecting many countries at the moment. So there's some examples. Let's now move on to the analysis diagram. This is the analysis diagram that you'll need to use if you want to get top marks for analysis for a question on positive consumption externalities. Initial diagram shows the private and marginal, uh, so the private cost and benefit of consumption. The, the, uh, the private cost is the internal cost to the consumer and the benefit is the, the benefit to the consumer from consuming a particular good or service. So the private optimum is at the intersection of those two curves that gives an output of Q1, quantity Q1. However, uh, we are assuming here that there are some positive externalities from consumption and if that's the case the marginal social benefit curve lies above the marginal private benefit and at Q1 there is an external benefit a third party spillover effect 
which we want to show. And of course, the vertical distance shows the extent of the positive externality. Now, the social optimum is where we take into account the social benefit of consumption, not just the private benefit. So the social optimum would be output level Q2 at a higher level of benefit P2. If the market price ignores the positive externalities, then they'll be under consumption. And essentially, we need to try to get to Q2. If we stay stuck at Q1, we're under consuming the product that could generate social benefits. Uh, the social optimum position is Q2, whereas the market equilibrium is Q1. And if that's the case, there's a market failure and there's an associated social welfare loss. Uh, the, the lost consumption, if you like, the underconsumption is Q1, Q2. And in that area, the social benefit lies above the private cost. And therefore, there's a social welfare loss. One of the big issues, of course, is putting a, putting a value, uh, a true value, an accurate assessment of what these externalities mean and how they can be calculated. Three takeaway points to finish with on positive consumption externalities. First of all, discussion of what actually constitutes a positive consumption externality always involves making value judgments. I've already hinted at some value judgments, my opinions on libraries and vaccinations, for example. There are potentially big social welfare gains from timely, effective interventions designed to increase the take up and ultimately the consumption of goods and services with positive externalities. And of course, many of you will have studied aspects of behavioural economics. So you might want to think, for example, about vaccinations, about library use, about using uh, bikes in city centres. What kind of behavioural nudges might be employed or deployed to increase consumption towards a socially optimum level? Or should the government rely on other forms of intervention to overcome the market failure that can happen with positive consumption externalities.